Titanic was not torn wide open, and that the damage totals a mere 12 square feet, the equivalent surface area of an average-sized person. And I found that uh, the media and the literature on the subject was so full of misleading information that uh, I began to get uh, interested. And the more we looked at it, then the more surprising things that we found. Their scenario begins at 1140. Bedford and Hackett calculate that immediately after impact, the water is rushing in at almost seven tons per second. Titanic was designed to sustain some flooding, but with six compartments flooding simultaneously, all safety gear was rendered useless. Just 10 minutes after the collision, most of the damaged compartments are filled to the top. According to the uh, inquiry report, you've got the mail room afloat, which brings it up to 24 feet. Unaware of the danger they're in, five men dragging mail to higher ground get caught in the intense flooding and drown. We can then go on another 10 minutes to midnight. The water's risen to G deck through number one hatch. In a mere 20 minutes after impact, passengers walking along the promenade comment that they suddenly feel as if they're walking downhill. By midnight, Bedford and Hackett estimate that the ship had taken on 8,000 tons of water. Based on the figures after 20 minutes at 12.20. 12.20, 40 minutes after the collision, the bow is only 15 feet away from being submerged. The first two lifeboats are launched, but they are not filled. People still cannot comprehend that the ship is going under. And that's it there. We've still no water at all, really, in number four. And everything is flooded now to the water line except number five. The bow is submerged. One hour there. after the iceberg strike, all damaged compartments are filled to the water line. Bedford and Hackett estimate that Titanic has now taken on 25,000 tons of water. Captain Smith knows time is running out. He orders distress rockets to be fired. Radio operators frantically signal for help. All in vain. Okay, she's still stable, so we can carry on. At 1.40, two hours after impact, the situation turns even more grim. Brave crewmen who've been supplying power to the ship's lights now scramble for their lives. More compartments flood, pulling the bow underwater. The giant stern heaves up into the night sky. In just over two hours, Titanic is lost. We can carry on filling up and we'll see if that's sufficient to sink her. Uh, and it is. And away she goes. That's it. So that's 20 past two. That's her sunk. More 
more than 1,500 people were still on the ship as she went down. One of the greatest marvels of her time was sent into the blackness of the sea by some 12 square feet of damage. At the time, she was the biggest. She was the best. She could beat nature. She could go through an ice flow. She could hit an iceberg. She was unsinkable. She was fast. She was big. But she was a pimple on the ocean. Nature could yawn and knock her aside and dead. The Titanic represented a time of great optimism. It was believed that technology reigned supreme over nature. When the great ship set sail, no one was concerned that there were not enough lifeboats on board. But after this incredible disaster, safety philosophy would change forever. Today, we know unsinkable ships cannot be built. Designs now focus on keeping vessels afloat just long enough to be abandoned. Okay, first, um, the signal abandoned or distress signal. Drills are mandatory and help ensure quick evacuation. Get your gear and... And meet. And, and meet down on the next floor where all the safety rafts are. Modern ships also carry enough lifeboats for all on board. On this was not the case with Titanic. Anyway, since the Titanic, there is, there is enough uh, room in the life draft for everybody. Survival suits like this one are provided to all passengers. They offer protection against freezing seas. Most of Titanic's casualties did not die from drowning, but rather from exposure to ice-cold water. <laughs> the deep sea is a new frontier. Few people have traveled to the dangerous depths of 12,000 feet. Prototype submersibles like Natil have opened up other worlds. But despite more than a decade of visits to Titanic, there is still much to learn. To biologist Roy Colomar, Titanic is like another planet, teeming with mysterious microbial that life. That only 5% of the microorganisms on this planet have ever been described or identified. 5%. We tend to think of the Earth as a surface. We live on the surface or close to the surface and the birds fly overhead, the trees grow in the soil, the water laps at the beaches and uh, we don't realize that there are many biological universes on this planet. They do not grow on agar so we don't see them. Colomar believes that Titanic is now home to a giant community of microbes. <laughs> um, that what we've got to do is find new techniques to find these organisms and get them to grow so we get a broader picture of the organisms that are out there. And Titanic is one side. He believes the organisms are actually eating Titanic. Two layers of film here. Colomar is building biological traps to capture and identify the bacteria that reside on the wreck. A strip of 35 millimeter film is the bait. 
Film is made with gelatin, which is food for bacteria.